We had flame sour, plenty of demolition, plenty of satchel charges, uh, all kinds of grenades, uh, two air-cooled machine guns, and the balance were BARs and M1s. And it was our concerted firepower that we were able to shut the slits on these pillboxes and then get the back door blown out and go away with them with a flame sour. That would burn the oxygen, so anybody in there, you didn't have to burn him, all you had to do was suffocate him. And that's what happened, usually. We were the only division uh, in World War II, Army, Navy, uh, or Army or uh, Marine, who left the United States and we landed on enemy soil. Uh, this was unusual and there had never had happened before. But uh, we were well prepared and uh, uh, we went into the Kwajalein Atoll and uh, uh, my uh, division took care of all the islands in the Kwajalein Atoll. So uh, we went to this island, it was 15 miles long and 6 miles wide and had 25,000 Japs on it and there was going to be three Marine divisions to land there. It turned out that two Marine divisions with an Army division and reserve landed with the 4th Division, which I was in, and the 2nd Marine Division, plus the 27th Army Division. Now, uh, it, was a, it was a bad deal to start with. It was a, it was a very uh, tight situation. There were uh, supposedly 3,000 Japanese on this island, and 5,000 Marines landed on it. And that island was... Uh, uh, about a hundred acres. <laughs> so that if you shot in any direction, but straight up, you were bound to hit something or somebody. Uh, naturally, there were a lot of people killed by our own fire, uh, friendly fire. And, uh, it was, it was pretty tight going, uh, for two days. It was, it was nasty going on that island. Uh, there were as many jobs behind you as there was in front of you all the time. Uh, it's what they call close order combat, I guess. <laughs> a long shot was 25 or 30 yards. And we found uh, 90 or so wounded Japanese under grass mats. And uh, of course the flies and maggots were eating them alive. Now, these chaps had been left because the enemy wasn't able to bury their dead and move their wounded back with them. Uh, they were probably in as bad a shape or worse shape than we were. Uh, they probably didn't have anything to eat. I hadn't had anything to eat now for 13 days, but that was the least of my worries. And uh, so we went into that area and saw what was there, and, and a few guys came up, and uh, we dispatched this uh, mass of humanity that uh, was laying there. Well. We started up this little room uh, that went under this natural bridge, and just as we started to make a little bend, uh, we walked right into a jet Nambu machine gun. And the kid that was ahead of me had the BAR of X.G. Adams. Uh, he took the full brunt of it up his right side, and it blew him right back on me. We both dropped our weapons, and and I got my hands under his arms and started dragging him back. If I put a tracer on him, and the machine gun would give him a burst. And we were trying to act like it was a whole half a company, at least the men, so that they wouldn't put on a, uh, a counterattack on us, because there was nobody here. And don't if we didn't make it. And as I was reaching for the uh, last clip of ammunition I had that morning, uh, that's when I got nailed. Uh, apparently a Jap I'd gone by was in a hole in the ground somewhere. And... Uh, he almost did a job on me, but he bumped his rifle just a little or something. And uh, I'm sure he was shooting at my face because that's all he could see because I was lying down. And uh, the bullet went in my, it blew the upper hand door of my rifle up first. And then it went in my finger, my little, or my index finger. See, my index hand was underneath, or my left hand was underneath the uh, uh, upper hand guard of my rifle. So I had a good hold on it. And then that bullet traveled down through my hand, came out my wrist, and then the same bullet went in my chest. It was a, it was a terrible shock to everybody uh, when President Roosevelt died. It sure was, especially to the military. And I felt like most veterans have felt that without a doubt, the dropping of the atomic bomb 
saved at least a million lives or more